Well, the second race of the day in the Toyota MR2 Championship was won by Jim Davis from Sean Trainer and Lewis Ward. On to the third and final race of the day then, Group 1 versus Group 2. Shane Mansbridge and Graham Malings lining up on the front row of the grid. Can they hold back the tide? Certainly it wasn't a very good start by Kevin Neal, number 41, from the second row of the grid there. And uh, Mike Nash, number 48, in his, his orange car, which has become quite a familiar sight during the course of today, he gets away from the back. But it is Mailings that is leading then. Jim Davis from the second row of the grid has gone up to P2. And he goes around the outside of Mailings there, I think, to take the lead of the race at Drids. Let's see if he's managed to get that move done as they drop back down towards Graham Hill Bend. Uh, no, he's not, actually. So it's Mailings, the uh, short oval racer, or short oval racer that leads then from Davis in second, Shane Mansbridge is third, Stuart Nichols is fourth, Paul Cook looks to be in fifth position. Then Cam Walton is sort of level pegging sixth with the number 95, the red roadster of Anthony Day. 67, Simon Quinn has made his way to the back of the field now as Mailings then is going to lead the first lap of this race. He started from the outside of the front row of the grid, which some people say is the favourable thing to do here at Brands Hatch. He's under attack though because around the outside him goes Jim Davis. We're watching for on board with Nigel Ralphson who scored his first MR2 win a little bit earlier on in the day. He started eighth on the grid for this one, so he's got work to do. He's behind Cam Walton. He's behind Anthony Day as well. What can he do from here? Well, Jim Davis has got through into the lead now. And Shane Mansbridge is trying to keep Stuart Nichols behind him. Oh, he's also got to try and keep Paul Cook behind him now because Paul, Paul Cook has appeared through and gone up into fourth place. Nichols, though, immediately fights back on the way down the Cooper Strait. And the other roadster, the lighter car, the more nimble but less powerful car of Anthony Day, also tried to find a way back past Paul Cook as well. Back on board with Ralphson then, number 85. He started 8th on the grid. Cam Walton ahead of him started 6th on the grid. Along the Brampton Strait, towards Paddock Hill Bend they go. And uh, Jim Davis stretching his legs in the lead of this race now. Oh, and there's a tangle further back. It's Michael Wells that's uh, stuck there. Alex Knight, number 33, is trying to motor his way through the gravel, but you can see uh, signs of some contact having been made there on the way into Paddock Hill Bend. It looks like uh, Mike Wells is going to be trapped there, though. That's a great shame for him because he was uh, on form in the very first race of the season at Donington Park. He finished third and won the road to class on that occasion. While well, Shane Mansbridge is trying to uh, keep his finger in the dike because Cam Walton is uh, right behind him there and there's another five cars queuing up as well including Dad, including Ralphson as well in the Mark II car and uh, now Stuart Nichols is trying to pull alongside Mailings Paul Cook's also involved in all of this as well yeah, Cook goes back through ahead of Nichols the driver from Hertfordshire Paul Cook the 47 year old director who's in 15 years of racing in Rotax 177 Kinarts He's uh, proved himself to be quite competitive in the early part of this season. Christian White, you can see, the number two car there for the man that uh, was leading the championship coming into this weekend. He, he won both of his races at Donington Park. It's not, uh, not quite gone to plan for him so far this weekend. He was ninth in his first race of the weekend. As off goes number 48, Michael Nash, I'm afraid to say. Um, not his first visit to that gravel trap this weekend. As Mailings is still clinging on from Stuart Nichols, who tries to go around the outside. Meanwhile, Paul Cook and Shane Mansbridge are together as well as they go into paddock that time. And Nichols carries more speed out of the compression up the hill, up towards Druid the hairpin. Can he get through here? Looking back now, that's Paul Cook's car, and that's Graham Mailings' car. So he's got through, and Mailings might lose a couple of places here. He's run out wide over the kerb there, and yes, so Nichols goes through to second place, Cook goes through to third, Mailings down to fourth, Mansbridge is fifth, Nigel Ralphson is in sixth place, missing from this scene is Jim Davis, who's heading for his second race win of the weekend. And there's Maxine Nichols going through, there's the number 19 car, which is Paul Hudson, behind Paul is number 65, Alan Cooper, the Yorkshire driver in his Mark II. 
but look at this stream of cars this far into the race quite remarkable scenes here at Brands Hatch there's Tim Heron ex uh, speed event contestants sprints and hill climbs there's Mansbridge with Ralphson and Christian White starting to make some progress now can he get up into the top four or five places before the end of this race I wonder it's Martin Fahey who had uh, dramas early on there's Alex Knight who had dramas early on in this race that tangle with uh, Mike Wells that's put him out of the race we've also lost Mike Nash to that Paddock Hill Bend gravel trap there's two of them in there as you can see 12 goes through that's uh, Nick Flowers the uh, 67 year old logistics manager from West Sussex still playing cricket even at uh, that advanced age as well as Nick cricket season just beginning a bit cold for that though here at Brands Hatch this weekend as we go on board with Ralphson and it's Bansbridge ahead he's out of shape and snaps off into the gravel trap and well that must have been pretty close to that car that was already there of Mike Nash and well yes not too much between them the Mansbridge racing car off into the gravel trap now here is the replay that's uh, Anthony Day of Head but you, know, you can see there wasn't much to choose there between that orange car of Nash that was stationary in the gold trap and uh, Shane Mansbridge who speared off to the left last lap begins Jim Davis already well onto it in actual fact in the lead of the race more than 10 seconds clear of the rest of the field which is headed now by Stuart Nichols from Paul Cook third Graham Mailing still doing one in fourth but up to fifth place has come Christian White so that's a pretty good effort from uh, Christian starting ninth but I actually think dropped back a little bit behind that uh, in the early part of this race so good effort from Christian uh, damage limitation really this weekend I guess given his strong start to the season at Donington uh, a month or so ago but Jim Davis already past the pit lane entrance and on to the Brabham straight in sight of the chequered flag his second win of the day, his third win of the season in the Toyota MR2 Championship. Here's Stuart Nichols, he's going to come through to win the C-Class, the Roadster class, and take second place overall. But you can see the margin, it's taken a long time for Stuart Nichols to get there. Paul Cock takes third, fourth and fifth, flash over the line together. Graham Mailings and Nigel Ralphson with Anthony Day sixth. Great dramas for Nick Flowers as well as we look at the results. Now you'll see but uh, a couple of changes there because Christian White promoted to third. Paul Cook excluded for having a non-compliant suspension. So Davis the winner by 13 seconds from Nichols and White in third place. Davis also got the fastest lap of 56.63, 76.79 miles an hour. Cam Walton slipped back down the order. He was 11th in the end ahead of Gary Skip, a non-finisher early on today. Mick Nichols, Alex Knight and his brother Anthony complete the top 15. Jim Davies, two out of two today here at Brands Hatch, and that second race was uh, very un MR2 like, really, with the the margin you had. Yeah, um, couldn't have ha couldn't have asked for a better day. Um, the the lead I pulled was a little bit artificial. Apparently, Graham was holding everybody up, but it felt great to look in my mirror and see nobody behind me. Um, and it got to a point where I was just sort of driving the wheels off the car to try and put a show on for the crowd, as it were. Yeah. I bet you had a, a lot of time to do a lot of thinking in that car. I was just trying to set a fastest lap, actually. Um, I wanted to make sure that I put one in that nobody could beat, and um, apparently I did, so happy days. Really Stuart Nichols, you've got on the podium for this year, and it's your birthday as well. Many happy returns. Thank you very much. Yeah, my birthday, my first race of the season as well, because I missed Donington, because I had a new arrival to the Nichols family, arrived on that day, so I felt like everyone's had a bit of a head start on me, but I'm really glad to be back, back here, actually. Lots going on out there for you. Uh, you had to work your way through uh, past the second place, man. Eventually, you got there. Man, that, that was... That was a race. That was a proper race. There was no let up at all. Um, I just don't remember relaxing one moment. It's, it, it was. We were so desperate to get past the guys that rightly they were at the front, but we had a funny quality that led them to be at the front, and they did a fabulous job of keeping us behind them. Paul Kirk on the podium for the second time today. Well done. Yep. Yep. I'm chuffed a bit. It's absolutely um, ecstatic. Of, you know, just being second in class in this race and. Uh, Second in the first race, yeah, brilliant. And you had a few people to get through in that one as well. Yeah, it's a, a few, the, the, the people that started the, um, the uh, grid made it really interesting for everybody, and uh, yeah, it was a totally interesting race.
Round four of the Radical Owners Club Bike Sports Championship lining up on the grid. Already this season we've had uh, two wins for Philip Cooper in the opening meeting of the season at Alton Park. He followed that up with a win in the race earlier on this afternoon as well from Alan Hogg and Will Brown. Pole position is held by Cooper this time. He lines up alongside Adrian Reynard in the uh, Radical SR8 row two. Phil Nib and Alan Hogg in the Spire. As the lights are on, they go out, and again, a poor start from Phil Nibby. Still yet to really work out how to get these radicals off the line. Phil Nib there in the radical SR3, but it's Cooper that leads, and Hogg from row two of the grid challenging him for the lead. Reynard down to third as they filter their way around. Let's just hope for better fortunes in this race, in the race earlier on today. It took three attempts to get a shortened race underway. Phil Cooper eventually taking the win by a couple of seconds. But here we've had a change because Hogg has got the lead of the race away from uh, Cooper now. Cooper in the number five car, the driver that's won all three races so far this season, leading the championship, of course, therefore. Number four goes through. That's uh, Evgeny Kluchev in the uh, Radical SR3 as two goes through that's Darcy Smith's SR4 as well over the line they go this is the fastest racing that we're seeing at Brands Hatch this weekend and there's a good fight going on for fourth place there and that is involving uh, Will Brown and I think Phil Nibb as well and they are disputing uh, fourth place there Will Brown on the podium he took third place in the opening race of the day in the car now being run by Eddie Ives elite motorsport engineering concern that also runs cars in the Gillette Junior Championship 2 and 88 together that's Darcy Smith and the 88 car is Richard Wise in the Spire GT3 he's running in uh, Class B notably absent from the grid this year is Tim Gray who was last year's champion who won every race, he took every pole position, he uh, was the fastest lap accessory in every race as well and he dominated the championship winning it by 125 points from Adrian Maynard and Tim Porter third last year. But uh, Tim letting someone else do the winning so far this season. At the moment that has been Phil Cooper up to now with three wins from three races for the driver from uh, Warrington. But it's Alan Hogg that uh, is ahead at the moment in the Spire, the X-Grey car. Never to think how he used to have his jades a few years ago when he raced those. There's Nib, number 90. Just uh, eked out a bit of an advantage over Will Brown now in the PR6. The driver from Dis. And we've got Darcy Smith and uh, Richard Wise just behind them in 6th and 7th places Carter going through in the blue and orange number 50 radical for the man from Kendall Brown's had a good lap here he's got back on terms with Nib now he dives out of the slipstream he's got his nose in front as they go across the line but he's on the outside line for Paddock Hill Bend Nib goes back through driver of car number 90 So nip and took battle, or nib and took battle between these two. Dropping down towards Graham Hill Bend. Be interesting to see how Hogg is faring up front actually, because in race one he complained that his tyres uh, went off uh, part way into the race. Well, this will be a longer race as well, 18 minutes plus one lap. We only run about 11 minutes in the end of the first race after two red flags. He is leading at the moment, but. Uh, his tyres may be going away from him, so we'll see how that pans out. Brown has another go. This time he's on the inside line, though, so he stands more chance of making this one work, and I think this time he has done it, yes. Well, Brown goes through. He takes fourth place away from number 90, Phil Nib. And the SR3 goes back down to fifth position. Hogg leading. Cooper second. Reynard third, and someone going a very long way off there. Ah, that's why as the wheel hoves into view. Now that is the 91 car of Max Lees, the unusual T5 mission for the driver from Leicester. He's not had a lot of luck with that car over the past year or so, I must say. 
but uh, let's hope for better fortunes for Max in the near future. The only driver racing in Class C, in third of the capacity classes. Nib number 90 goes across the line again. The man from Rochester, again, not too far away from Brands Hatch. So, Cooper now with Alan Hogg, and I wonder if that is a question of the tyres getting off, as I thought it might be. Certainly, Hogg uh, had some concerns about that in the first race of the weekend, and uh, Cooper getting back onto terms with him now, putting in some good lap times here. As he narrows the advantage... Meanwhile, this battle that's been going on for much of the race between Darcy Smith and Richard Wise continues. And they're both just behind uh, Evgeny Kluchev. Oh, behind this back marker, that could be costing Hogg a little bit of time. Will the back marker also delay Philip Cooper? No, I don't think it will. So the back marker there undoubtedly has helped Philip Cooper gain at least a couple of tenths, I would suggest, as they cross the line to complete another lap here at Browns Hatch we have a battle on for the lead and it's the final race of the weekend at Browns Hatch looks like it's the number 33 car of Richard Hardy the Oxfordshire driver that they've had to negotiate there and bearing in mind he's not exactly going slowly he's still lapping in under 50 seconds a lap here but the leaders lapping much faster than that uh, sub 47 seconds in fact in the case of uh, Hogg and Cooper Hogg it is with the best lap of the race so far but Cooper has got out front now so Cooper has taken the lead away Hogg down to second place but can he fight back in what remains of this race Hogg's on a 46-6-1 Cooper not quite as fast as that as um, Will Brown getting involved in some of the traffic as well now. That's the 15 car of Jack Manchester that is being negotiated in the SR3 RSX. See the use of bodywork being the most uh, obvious change to the uh, passive observer. So Cooper from Hogg now as we are approaching the final stages of this race. See Max Lee's car parked up on the grass on the exit of Graham Hill Bend, where it shed its wheel a few laps ago. And on the seventh lap of the race, when uh, Max came to grief, unfortunately. There's Reynard then, the 1979 European Formula 4 2000 champion, but best known for his race car designs. And it was a car his only son that he won in, of course, back in 79. Well, Hogg here has not given the leader any respite, has he? That's that much is for certain. As Will Brown negotiates some more traffic, he has got up to third place ahead of Reynard, who finished fourth in race one, and it looks like he's destined to do the same here. It looks like we're destined to have the same top five finishes, in fact, with Phil Nib there in P5 as well. Having said that, the challenge is on for the lead here, because Hogg is within a car length of Philip Cooper. Hogg from Hartley in the Spire taking the fight to the Radical PR6 in this Radical Owners Club backed bike sports championship through clearways and towards Clark Curve they go with less than two car lengths between them as they go over the line to start the final lap of the weekend here at Brands Hatch can Cooper hold on to make it four wins out of four? The irony of his strong start to the championship would be the fact that he's not going to be able to do all of the rounds of this season because he's a, a top autograss campaigner as well and there's clashing events. And so it looks like uh, Cooper may have to rescind his championship advantage when we continue the season in June at Snetterton. Turning their way through Clearways and Clark Kerr for the final time. I think Cooper is just about going to cling on, but Hogg has made him work quite hard. Coming up to the end of the 24th and final lap of the race. Checkered flag goes out. Four from four for Phil Cooper. Well done, Tim. And as he goes across the line that time, he has indeed set his personal best lap of the race as well. Not quite enough to unseat Alan Hogg 
from that uh, fastest lap and lap record. Let's have a look at the results. Philip Cooper winning by just over half a second from Alan Hogg. Will Brown, a slightly distant third place. Adrian Reynard fourth. Despite that poor start, Phil Nib fifth. And Darcy Smith in sixth. Reynard, by the way, winning Class A. Further down, Jack Manchester was 11th, Chris Child 12th, Richard Hardy 13th, Henry Passon 14th, and the last of the finishers was Mark Grayson, two laps down on the leaders. Phil Cooper, what a way to end your day there with uh, two victories. Uh, really good race with Alan Hogg. Yeah, fantastic. It started very similar to race one. Alan disappeared in the early laps and I had to work hard to bring him back in. Uh, a couple of back markers helped me. We made a bit of progress, a little bit quicker than Alan. Um, yeah, it was a very exciting race. And these cars are very, very quick, so it just takes one slight mistake and you're just through. Yeah, when i would never been here before this weekend. You turn into Paddock Hill Bend and there's just no grip on the front whatsoever until you get to the bottom. Just sort of straighten it up at the top, head for the gravel and hope it grips by the time you get to the bottom of the uh, hill. Very exciting to drive. Um, yeah, good. Well, that's all we've got time for here at Brands House. The 750 Motor Club Action will continue at Croft in May. Goodbye.